Welcome back to our tutorial series on how to use Adobe InDesign CC. In the first tutorial in this series, we created a new document, standard US magazine size. In this tutorial, we're going to create custom margins and an intricate grid for laying out our content. First things first, before we create this master grid and margins, we want to make sure we're doing it to the master template. So that's something we want to look at in Adobe InDesign. I'm going to click on pages. I'm in essentials just in case you're not in essentials. And I want to click on pages. You can see this fly out box here. Now since we're starting on page two, we do not have a single page like this. We just have three spreads. I want to create this grid and margins on the master template. What does that mean? That means that if you look here on each of these spreads, there's an A in the upper left. And if we go up here, you see a master. And you can have more than one master. You can have, I don't even know if there's a limit. I'm sure there's at some point. But you can have A master, B master, C master, and you could set this as a template so everything that's A will have this stuff on it. Very useful as you get into bigger magazines or yearbooks and you can set certain pages to different masters. So we want to set this up on A master. So I'm going to double click on A master just so both of these are highlighted blue. While we're here, let's also go ahead and make some layers. So first layer, I'm going to double click instead of layer one, I'm going to call this master elements. I'm going to click OK. Down here, create new layer. I'm going to hold down option as I click on that. And we're going to have a layer for, oop, not print, for text. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to come down to Master Element, Option, click. And we're going to call this one for images. Well, I guess we'd call it, yeah, images. Images work. And click OK. We want to have Master Elements on top. So I'm going to click and drag that up. Master Elements, Text, and Images. We're going to come back to our pages. We're still on master. Now let's go ahead and do a little bit of math. It's going to sound complicated first. I'm going to close this for now. I can look down here on the bottom left. Make sure that I am on a master before I continue. And I am. Let's come up to layout. Margins and columns. We're going to create custom margins and columns. Our top margin is going to be, and let's make sure that this is unlinked because we're going to have a top margin that's different from our bottom margin. So I'm going to make our top margin 33 points, our bottom a little bit bigger at 46 points, and then our inside and outside are going to mimic that. And you can see the preview here that I have set up. I'm going to leave number of columns and gutter at the default and click OK. Now you can see it is thinner or not as tall for our top margin versus bottom. Same thing on inside versus outside. So that sets our margins. Next up, layout and create guides. We're going to create guides essentially going to be a grid that we're going to create mathematically that's going to help us align all of our other elements as we create our InDesign document. So layout create guides. We're going to do an aspect ratio of 1 to 1.3. Right? This is based on math. I just looked at the size of our document and then did a little bit of math, a little bit of division. We need to make sure so our grid, so the boxes are relatively the same size. 
and it's all nice and neat. 1 to 1.3. What that means is we're going to have one row for every one point or one column for every 1.3 rows. So we're going to have 13 rows. Our gutter, that's the space. Again, I have preview turned on just so you can see. This is our first grid, and then this space below it, that's kind of like the line space in between. We're going to make that 11 points. All right, so 11 points. That's the letting that I'm going to use, the, the line height, the space in between two lines of text. It's a math did ahead of time, I'm going to do 11 points. Our number of columns in 1 to 1 1.3 is 10, and our gutter is 11 points here. And we want to fit guide to margins and click OK. Now we got this complicated looking graph paper, right? But what we have here is plenty of little boxes to align images and text columns to. So we can have multiple sizes to play with. Always good to have more rows and columns than less. Gives you more flexibility in your layout and design. Lastly, we need to make a baseline grid. That's what we're going to align our paragraph text to. So that's going to be up on InDesign here in the upper left-hand corner and Preferences Grids. InDesign Preferences Grids. Click on that. We want our baseline grid to be a different color from our normal grid, so we don't want it blue. I'm going to hit the drop down menu and I'm going to choose charcoal. That's going to give us a kind of gray baseline grid, slightly darker. We're going to start this at zero points relative to the top margin, increment. Same as our letting, same as our gutter, 11 points. And we want our view threshold. Where will we see this? Zoomed at 50% or higher. We will see this baseline grid. And we want to make sure grids show up in the back. That means once we start placing text and images, we can still see the grids, but they will be behind the pictures. And let's click OK. And you're thinking, whoa. I don't see it. Why don't I see it? Most of the time we don't want to see it. It's going to be distracting. How do you see it? View, grids and guides, show baseline grid. And this is essentially like lined paper and we're going to line text up to that. But I find it can be very distracting to have it on all the time while we're still setting up our document. So I'm going to come up to view, grids and guides, and hide our baseline grid for now. So now we have custom margins, we have our grid set up, we have our baseline grid. We are all ready to start wireframing, doing our basic layout in design. And we'll look at that and how to do text and images coming up.